answers? I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. And you have offended a Shaolin Temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Radical Brand. All right, folks, time for the Radical Rant, and you know the reason I'm here has all to do with workplace drug testing, and it's one of the things I rail about the most. I just got this headline that came across the uh, the public relations newswire, and Huffington Post uh, put it this way, U.S. job seekers test positive for drugs at highest rate since 2007, study finds. So uh, I checked uh, the source on this, and this is uh, the source, of course, comes from Quest Diagnostics. And if you don't know Quest Diagnostics, they're the largest drug testing corporation uh, in America, in the world, I believe, but definitely in America, processing millions and millions of drug tests whose entire business model relies on making sure marijuana is illegal so there's people to test. Anyway, Quest Diagnostic and their, uh, their doctor, Dr. Barry Sample, Yes, <laughs> Dr. Barry Sample uh, put out this press release that says job candidates subject to pre-employment drug screening tested positive for illicit drugs at a greater rate for the first six months of 2012 than in all of 2011. According to Drug Testing Index, the data was released today by Quest Diagnostics, the world's leading provider of diagnostic information services. Answer my question. World's largest. The positivity rate from pre-employment urine drug screening in the U.S. general workforce increased to 5.7%. All right, so the headline's been repeated all over the place. People casually looking around the news. Oh, my God. We're legalizing marijuana. Now look what's happening. The drug test rates are up. We can't find any employees. They're all failing the drug test. It's up 5%. 5.7%. Oh, my God. Well, let's take a deeper look at this, shall we? First of all, while the pre-employment urine drug screening increased 5.7%, positivity for random drug screening is down 5.8%. So we're, cat we're catching or you know, uh, discriminating against more cannabis consumers before they get a job but people that have jobs that are randomly tested, fewer and fewer of them are being caught for drugs. The positivity rate for pre-employment drug screening for federally mandated safety-sensitive workforces remained unchanged. That's your DOT drivers, uh, for example, you know, truck drivers and such, has remained unchanged. So in the industries where safety is paramount and Allegedly, we'd have the most fear of the pot smokers. We're not catching any more of them than we did before. Only in all the other jobs are we catching them more in the private workforce. Now, um, the positivity rate from ran random testing for those federal drug safety sensitive workforce people was also down 6.7%. So what again is the big scandal, the big problem when Almost all of the drug testing rates for marijuana are down, but I'm sorry, for all drugs, I should say. Positivity rate for all drugs is down. Of course, when we all know that when we're talking about drug tests and urine screening, we're mostly talking about marijuana, right? We don't have to go over that again. So most of your drug testing for pot is down, except for pre-employment. And why this is, is such a concern, and I saw this in the business page in, in Huffington Post, is it is is some of these business leaders say it's you know it's getting tougher and tougher to get new employees because so many of them are failing the drug test. Has it occurred to you to not have the drug test? <laughs> uh, so here's another um, quote here is that uh, and this is uh, Barry Sample again, Dr. Sample. The Drug Enforcement Administration insisted in a January filing that marijuana legalization would promote increased drug use. But Dr. Sample, who said Quest has been compiling data on workplace drug tests for 25 years, said he has found no correlation in the data between states that have decriminalized or legalized the use of marijuana and the positivity rates for pre-employment drug tests. Got that? 
the guy who runs the drug testing corporation says it doesn't make a difference whether a state has legalized or decriminalized as to whether or not they have more or fewer pre-employment drug test positives. No correlation. Now, we still have that initial stat, though. Positivity rate from pre-employment urine drug screening in the U.S. general workforce increased by 5.7%. What's going on there? Well, turns out this is one of those cases where behavior may not have changed a whole bunch, but reporting has. You know about this? This is a phenomenon where we talk about like, uh, oh, let's take a stat, pick one out of the air. Domestic abuse. All right. Is there more domestic abuse now than there was in the 1950s? Probably not. But there's more women and men and people reporting it, right? There was, it was just more culturally accepted to smack the wife around in the 50s and it didn't get reported as domestic violence. Didn't mean it wasn't there. You know, child molestation stats, uh, uh, Maybe even uh, when we talk about uh, uh, autism stats, maybe we just are better at diagnosing it now, right? And we have a better idea what's going on. That same type of function is going on with this data, with this 5.7% increase in the positivity rate. This is from that story on the PR Newswire. This is Dr. Sample putting it out here. Due in part to advances in oral fluid technology implemented in late 2011, the oral fluid marijuana positivity rate was 70% higher than that of urine. Huh? Let me explain that. Let me break it down. Most of the time when you go to take a drug test, you go to get a job, right? It's a pee test. Pee in the cup, right? Now, from about late 2011 on, more and more employers have had this flu uh, oral fluid test. It's basically a spit test. They take a little swab and they spit, get the spit from inside your cheek, and then they can detect that from that whether or not you've been using certain drugs, pot and other drugs. Now, if you can't figure out that it's probably a lot harder to cheat a drug test when it's a swab in your mouth versus the P test, then now you're going to start to understand why the drug test positives have gone up. If you were the guy who was working, you know, the shift job and every day strapping a plastic dong to your body with a little bag of heated urine, you know, a little blister pack that opens up and heats that up so that when you had to take your pee test for random and that guy wasn't looking, you could whip out your fake urine out of your fake dong. If you were that guy, well, now you're going to turn positive when they do the oral fluid test because there's no fake dong for that. You can't do that. And that's the other part of drug testing that just really, just as an aside, it, it, that if employers don't realize this is going on, that many of their employees are smoking pot and wearing dildos to work so that they can continue to smoke pot at home. So that if you pop them for a test, they can, and, and they're, they're strapping on, they, they've got fake pee strapped with them at all times. You realize this is going on because of this stupid policy? Anyway. So Dr. Sample continues to, to say, quote, simply put, it's extremely difficult to cheat an oral fluid collection when someone is observing, end quote. So yeah, the drug test positive rate went up by 5.7%, but we've got these oral tests that are coming up 70% positive more often than the urine tests, a 70% greater charge. And now we're getting more oral tests being rolled out in the workplace. So yes, of course the rate went up 5.7% because now you're actually catching the people who were getting away with it before, who were cheating before. There's no more people using marijuana and having to deal with the workplace. You're just better at catching them now. Now, here's where it will start to make you kind of angry. Marijuana continues to be the most commonly detected drug. Data from urine drug tests showed that marijuana positives in the U.S. drug force are 2%. That's right, 2%, 1 out of 50. But they are nearly twice that of amphetamines, which are at 0.86%, ranked as the second most commonly detected drug. Cocaine positivity rates are down 14.6%. But amphetamine positives continued a five-year upward trend. In urine drug testing in the U.S. general workforce, the amphetamine positivity rate increased 11.7%. In the federally mandated safety-sensitive workforce, amphetamine positives increased 6.8%.
So while you're making a big whoop about what us pot smokers might be up to and how we might affect the, the workplace, people on meth are getting caught more and more. And remember, for these guys to get caught with amphetamines, they had to have done it fairly recently because that drug doesn't stay in your system long enough to get detected. That's just shocking to me. Now, as we go through this, of course, they always have their 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 point as to why this is important, and that's because substance abuse negatively affects, affects the workplace through lost productivity, workplace accidents and injuries, employee absenteeism, low morale, increased illness, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I decided to look that up. I was wondering just how productive are American workplaces these days. From the Bureau of Labor Statistics, from the fourth quarter of 2011 to the fourth quarter of 2012, productivity increased 0.5%. Hours increased 2.5%. Productivity up 1.9%. Annual average up 0.7%. Manufacturing up 2.1%. <laughs> Durable goods up 2.7%. Productivity is up all across the board. And injury and illness data? According to the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics and OSHA, the injuries and illnesses and the lost work because of them are down to the lowest levels ever recorded. You got a solution in search of a problem here with these drug test people. Hey, that's all the time we got for this show. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for Hour 2. We got more news and views to get to. A bunch of stuff I couldn't fit into Hour 1. Maybe even some more of the presentation. For Brian the Red, I'm Radical Russ. Until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You take a scene, you plan it, you roll it, you try it, you roll it.